I love one, this is Gen Rage Quit, and today we're looking at the Unholy Dead Knight as requested. So, uh, let's start off with the talents. I, uh, first I pick Even Fever. As you can see here. This one, Fester Wounds does 50% more damage when burst, and all enemies within 8 yards of bursting Fester Wounds suffer 90.3k shadow damage. Thought this one was already, was, uh, nice, I could, I could have taken that one. But I wanted to see how it worked with Virulent Plague, because I could really easily activate that with the Wandering Plague, which is a PvP talent. But perhaps this one is better for DPS. Um, epidemic, because you cause each of your fir virulent plagues within thousand, 100 yards to flare up dealing 50k shadow damage, blah blah, you can read that. Didn't really want that one because I wasn't, didn't really want to have another rune activating spell. Because I already need to spend all my runes on other abilities to begin with. And this one just was like, eh, if I, if I pop that one, I, I get a free rune, which helps for damage, why not? And this one is also, it's like, eh, out of texture and holy. It means that even in PvP it's gonna take too long to, to apply them, so this one's the best for me. Another frenzy, 100% attack speed. Why not? Because this one was uh, crits. It's like I was looking at my crit chance, and I was like, mate, 15%, not really worth it. And this one replaces a uh, scourge strike. I'm like, eh. It's like you don't want to do full shadow damage. I don't know. It just didn't feel right. As I said here, this one's easy because the other ones don't really. It's like a little slow, and like a improved ghoul, but the ghoul, eh. So I don't really care about that one. So because this one seemed a lot nice for PvP, it's like an extra five second CC that can fuck people over hardcore. Then linger operation, raid walk. You never really use it. Spell eater, anti magic cells, twenty percent large and last five seconds long run. Well, pretty much useless to just physical users. So that's why I use corpse shield instead. It's like. This one actually saved my game in the second arena game. Saved my ass, because I used this one, I killed my good Hovek, <laughs> obviously, but it's like, uh, I survived long enough for the, to kill the person. And here in the Krosis, dealing damage with death call causes your next crit strike to deal 25% damage. It's, it just seems the, it seemed like that was just the right choice here, if you look at the other ones. Because it's PvP, this fight lasts really long when you're just playing DPS. Uh, it lasts really short when you play DPS, so I was like, this is just the flat up biggest DPS increase for Arena, in my opinion. And here, Dark Arbiter, just a better Valkyrie. <laughs> so, when we will gain 1% increased damage for every runic power you spend, so you can just like up its damage. Really hardcore, and defile people walk out of it in PvP, so it's not really worth it. And Soul Reaper is another rune ability, and it's like you're already too busy spending runes on other shit, especially when you use Necrotic Strike because you also want to get that up and if you have like three or four extra rune, spell, uh, rune spells it's just sitting there like, yeah which one am I supposed to cast? so that's why for the sake of easier for myself I picked the Dark Arbiter there and then look at the PvP talents Adaptation, I always use this one because it auto activates when it's a 5 second or longer stun it's like those are already really important to like get away so it automatically activates on those. Reinforced armor, talked about this before, just 10% flat increase, which is really nice. Anti magic zone, which I actually forgot to use because I'm an idiot. Um, hard stop R decreases the cooldown recovery rate of abilities. You know why I picked this one, it's just so that they can't get their cooldowns back fast. Like, they get their cooldowns come back a lot later, so they can't, like, use their cooldowns quicker quick again. Because the other one's like 5% increase magic damage, eh. Slowly decay, eh. It's like if you're blood decay, maybe. And then here, as requested, Wandering Plague and Necrotic Strike. Wandering Plague is when you just cast a vir virulent plague on the target instantly. So, I was looking at the other ones, Pandemic. I was like, eh, that's kinda, kinda oh, nice. When you use Outbreak, they, they take uh, more damage. And Disease Reduction is refreshed. I'm like, eh, eh, it's alright. But not really what I want. It's like, a, especially since this got requested. And Crypt Fever when enemies are healed while affected by festering wounds, they take 3.33k shadow damage. This one, actually, looking at this one, when you're playing against healers, it's like you know you're gonna play against at least one healer. It's like I didn't know. It's like I looked at this one, I was like, I'm gonna take Wandering Plague anyway, because you never know if you play against healers or not. And since I've, after all the arena games I've played on the Alpha, I don't really see that much healers. It's mostly deep, just flat out DPS that I see. And, and tanks. So. But this one, if you know that you're gonna go up against healer, like 3 vs 3, 5 vs 5, then you could really take this one, because that means that every time they try to do this, uh, try to heal themselves, they take damage, so they, like, you decrease the effectiveness of your heal. Which basically means that, combined with Necrotic Strike, you can really hurt healers. Really hurt healers. So, uh, let's look at this one, Unholy Mutation. Shit, it's like, it's just slow, but it's like, it's not really good. Reanimation is also shit, it's like, no. 
It's like, no, it's just no. People will just kill it. So necrotic strike is the easy choice here. So you need to converse one fashion wound to necrotic wound. Absorbing the next 81k healing resist per target. So essentially what you're doing now with that is just fast strike, fast strike, fast strike, strike. Just get those pustules on those uh, festering wounds on them and then like start procking them with your necrotic strike and your scourge strikes. So that's what my plan is to do. And now let's go into the gameplay. So here we go into the gameplay. As you can see here playing with an elemental shaman, I think, against uh, a warrior and a monk. So I feel like we should blow up the warrior first. So what I want to do is like just place my arbit like my uh, arbiter on it, which is the gargoyle, and then just start spamming abilities on them. And like when I when the warrior gets slow, I know that I wonder I wonder I don't think the warrior healing is still broken as fuck, but in case it's broken as fuck, I'm just gonna sit there and spam the crotic strike on it so it won't so the warrior won't heal. It's like I know that the warrior is probably the least squishy of the two. Get set instantly cleanse it. Go heal on the warriors. Warrior runs away. Press my arbiter. Start spending some runic power so it's it's uh it starts damaging more. Keep going hunting the. The warrior, fear and plague him. Stun. Then just like see, you can see the, like the healing. You could do no healing because of the necrotic plague that I stacked. Oh shit! That frame dropped though. But uh, so many effects by the way. Soon I'm gonna update my computer so that it will be better. So I'm trying to run away, try to get more some more of those uh, festering wounds on that person, so I can uh, start stacking necrotic plague in case of more heals. Fear and plague again there. There we go, just gonna just finish the wall, the wall, him off. As you can see here, the damage that, that the that knight puts out is sick. It's like, it's just sick. I do just do so much more damage than the shaman. It's like, it's, it, it reminds me of when I played with a paladin, with a paladin. It's like, it did so much more damage than me. This is like, on that level. It's like, unholy dead knight damage, super viable. It's like, the damage is sick. It's like, if you play it well, it's sick. As you could see there in that thing. And then you're playing against the same people with the same... Uh, person with me, but yeah, I'm gonna update my computer in like a month, so that means that I'm gonna like, uh, oh well, the, the computer's gonna arrive in a month because it has to come from the Netherlands because that's where I bought all the parts and I put it together. So, uh, just gonna have to wait a little bit. So, yeah, I just get let my let sit out the stun. They're focusing me now because I did so much damage, pop everything instantly. Just full on nuke on the warrior. Now, is that necrotic striking because of low HP? No healing possible for you, goodbye. Dead. Switch off uh, to him. I'm like, why am I not? I'm like, you need to spend runic power. Spend your runic power. And yeah, I use the ghoul, the ghoul thing actually, to uh, to survive there. Which means that my ghoul is dead now. Get stunned again. Touch spamming uh, that cause. Running, kiting a little bit so I don't get attacked by the Shen. The Shen. And there we make the kill. As you can see again, shit loads of damage. Survived because of the ghoul and the corpse shield. It's like first I activate the ghoul like takes 50% less damage and then I activate the corpse so it would last longer. So that's uh, a really nice survivability. But yeah, what what do I think about an early that night? Super viable. Really viable in terms of DPS. Maybe a bit maybe a bit squishy when focused hard by two DPS, but you can still as you can see survive long enough to do enough damage to kill them. So I'd say yeah. An holy DK, very viable actually, very viable, especially compared to the frost DK that I play a little bit. It's really viable. So, if you want to go play an holy DK in Legion, I'd recommend do it because it feels really, really nice. And I'll talk to you guys next time.